Hi, welcome to a product review by Robojax. In this video, we are going to do the review and test this XL6019 5 ampere boost converter. We are going to test the input voltage and see at what input voltage it can produce maximum and minimum voltage. And also, we are going to test different current under different load condition. We are going to test it to see under different voltages and different amount of current how it behaves. This is the electronic load DL3031 input 5 volts output 40 volts input 5 volts output 24 volts input to 12 volts output to 24 volts input is 15 volts output 24 volts input is 24 volts output is 36 volts input is 30 volts in case somebody needs 40 volts Let's get started with this. When you search on eBay.com, XL6019, this is what you get. These are the prices 170, 190 plus this tax, and you will get it maybe in 60 days or 70 days. And here on Amazon.com, you will see that 8, 9, or 10 dollars US. This is the module that that's a chip from Excel Semiconductor. The model is XL6019. That is the back boost converter, but it has been used here as a boost converter only. We have a lab we have two terminals at the input labeled as N plus N minus. That's a negative and positive for the input, and this is the output labeled as uh, negative and positive. We have two electrolytic capacitors for the input, it is with the low voltage, 35 volts, and for the output, we have 50 volts. And this is 220 microfarad, and this is 100 microfarad. The output voltage is adjusted using this 10 kilo ohm multi turn potentiometer. Keep in mind that this is multi turn, sometimes you have to turn it like five or ten times before you see some change until it reaches a certain point. And this is a 330 micro Henry uh, inductor that is part of the design of this. And we have here a short key diode. This is a diode that is part of the boost converter. And all of the current that is converted passes through this. And this um, diode here is at the input. This has been directly connected the cathode is connected to the positive, the anode is connected to the negative. And in case if you connect it reverse, if you connect the polarity incorrectly, it will just protect it and a short circuit will cause your fuse or whatever you have will blow out. It does not have any uh, heat sink except this PCB. And they've created this small panel here and then a little on this side. So this definitely will heat up and we will test it and see. Here is a data sheet, so it can be used as a back boost converter in both cases. Input voltage is 5 volts to 40 volts. Uh, it can be positive or negative regulator. There is some reference voltage that you can adjust it, but this is for design purpose. We are not concerned. Thermal shutdown here, this is an important one because if, heat, if it heats up, it will shut it down. And also built-in current limit function, which means if it is going to be above 5 ampere, it will shut it down. It's the function block diagram, internal oscillator of 180 kHz for the switching frequency. And this is a typical application VN. As you can see, the output voltage must pass for the boost converter through this. This the input voltage, minimum 5 volts, maximum 40 volts. This one, the important one, quiescent current. If you do not draw any current from the output, Typical 2.5 milliampere, it consumes maximum of 5. I'll provide you the link for this if, in case if you need further information. The cathode of the diode should be at the output, and the anode of the diode should be connected to pin 3. The diode that is used here, SS34. Let's have a look at the data sheet. This is from Vishai, SS34. And here, Forward current is 3 ampere. This is the positive output pin, my continuity tester, and that is the other side is the cathode. So
so that's the cathode and this is the anode anode must be connected to pin 3 1 2 3 so it's connected so this is a diode and we have a bright LED here very bright here is how I connected it the input is connected to my power supply and this side is connected to my load electronic load which I'm going to show you now this is the electronic load DL3031 and these are the two terminals that from the circuit will be connected in here and we will see the voltage here and the current and also I'm measuring the input voltage using this sensor here so this is the input voltage and currently it draws 0 0.1 ampere 100 milliampere this is the interface for my electronic load we are seeing the input voltage here and input current here and output voltage and output current in here when I select the current you will see the current in this area so the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to see the maximum and minimum voltage of this regulator without any load as you can see there is no current let's just increase it and see where it goes and here the voltage that you're reading is in here so the first thing when I do clockwise the voltage is being reduced this is bad design this should have been the opposite so when you rotate to the right by convention it should increase okay let's go with the lowest remember the input voltage is 11.8 so that is the minimum 11.9 and now let's go up um, pay attention here this is 50 volts capacitor if the output voltage exceeds this capacitor will blow up so let's see what I what I've said it for 38 40 volts so 40 volt is the maximum that they have set it that's good let's say I'm setting it at 39 now let's change the input voltage I'm reducing it now it's pay attention to that and pay attention to this Let's see at what voltage it drops. Seven, still holding, 7.4. Six volts, 5.9. input of 5 volts you never get 40 volts even with 0.2 ampere now let's get input 5 volts output 24 volts this is 0.2 ampere still good with a 5 volts input you can get 24 volts output this is a little lower but still acceptable but you can get only 0.4 ampere and see the input 2.54 that's the current Now I've set input to 12 volts, output to 24 volts. Uh, let's see with one amp. Okay, from 12 you can get 24 with one ampere here. Uh, let's go 1.1 1 .1 amp. Still, that's good. Let's go 1.2. That's good. 1.3. Still holding. One point four. So that's one point five ampere. Let's reduce it to four. Still not working. Three. One point three. 
because the thermal shutdown is shutting this down this is still acceptable as you can see this is dropping one point two so this is good let's go with one point two as I was testing it seems that this one is dried so I put the second one that I have now input is 24 volts output is 36 volts let's go 1.4 ampere let's see how it drops as you can see it's slowly dropping but and here is efficiency the output power input is 30 volts in case somebody needs 40 volts 1.4 amp and here the efficiency thank you for watching this was my test and review and i could say that this module with this shape without extra heatsink cannot handle a lot of current thank you for watching this was the review and test of this module for conclusion that i would say is that this cannot handle the claimed current but at 10 volts different between input and output you can get 1.4 ampere meaning that meaning if the, we have 30 volts and then 40 volts output you can get 1.4 ampere maximum and even with the design it has been designed not to handle anything above 1.4 ampere If you like this video and learn something, please thumb up. If you have comment or question, post it at the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. And you may subscribe so you can get updates of my upcoming videos.